Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. So uh, we kind of stopped a little past halfway on this one or whatever. I uh, had to go. So figured I would jump in today and at least add another hour. Hopefully wrap this up. But uh, and answer any questions you guys might have about the process. So uh, after a few people jump in here, give me an audio check. I will uh, start conversing with you. But uh, at this point, I will just keep working on this until I know... I know you guys are here and can hear me. Says we got some viewers, but uh, yeah, so what's up, yo? So we got Samuel Jones, Sam Cooper, hello. Uh, Sanon Studios, first-ish, uh, he says. Uh, Vamp Stamp, nice, got a yo there. Tube du tubes, dubs, what's up? And Icon, good to have you back, hello. Uh, yeah, so audio sounds good. Thank you, Benton Miller, for that. All right, so let's uh, you know let's jump back into this. Um, so as I mentioned before, one of the neat things, or you know, let me crop this first. It looks really weird with the arm being longer. Let's go to canvas, crop and resize. I'm just gonna cheat, make my life a little easier, drag that down. I'm gonna purposely leave him over to the left because uh, you know the rule of thirds or whatever. It's always good to kind of offset your character, especially in a very boring. Uh, static shot like this so um you got to take almost like more of those little uh things and, and and um techniques and implement them because it is you know i went with a very boring shot which I, sh I shouldn't have i'm regretting that but i did so we gotta deal with it um so i got this layer the shirt layer and really the eyes i like to combine things when they're you know they can be the same color neighboring colors or not touching edge to edge so i use layers kind of efficiently that way I did the two finger swipe over which gives you that little checkerboard look and that means that the pixels are locked in that layer. The other thing is I can add the layer over top, tap it once, hit clipping mask, and now anything I paint will actually stay in that refined area which is really good, uh, really effective for coloring. I absolutely love coloring in the software. It's very, very easy. So, um, or app I should say, my bad. Uh, so now what I'll do on, on the shirt design is I'll just take my selection tool. Remember, it's locked into this white or gray like flood area. So I don't have to have my selection tool stay to that edge. I can go right past the edge, which affords me a little bit of leniency to kind of play around with this. And then I can grab something like my soft brush. Where is it at? Airbrush. Where are you? Right there. Shadow brush. It really can be a normal brush because you got to remember, now I'm on a floating layer right there. So basically, it can be, uh, I can control that one of two ways. I can control the uh, blending with, uh, oh, you know what? Sorry, I forgot part of my selection there. Let me go back, do that again. Or you know what? That might be, yeah, that's a problem with the actual uh, coloring underneath. So that's something else we got to be careful of because um, since I am using layers that are affecting uh everything over top of the underlying layer, the clipping mask, this layer right here has to be correct. So if I toggle that off, let me, I don't even know how I did this. It must be cut out right here, that's what it is. So I've got a cut out in the blue, which I shouldn't have. Um, so now if I put, put that into place, yeah, let me just fill this in again, sample this color, grab a solid brush, Make sure this is filled in. I'm a bit of a messy colorist. Sometimes I go outside of the lines. Yeah, let me just fill this all back in to make sure we're good. Let's see, any any questions up here? Or just everybody saying, hey, what's up? Hi again. Yep. All right, no questions, right? All right, just checking. I'm kind of going back here a step, but let me get rid of that uh, sketch line as well. I got another one in the blue. Where's that at? Right there. So 
so hopefully you guys are all having a a wonderful day today this fine Tuesday it is Tuesday right I hope wouldn't be the first time I lost track of a day but you know I think it's actually kind of a good thing like when you lose track of a day it shows that you know you're really just kind of enjoying life I mean like what day is it I don't know do I need to know that is that is that really pertinent information I don't know that it is I think we've just been trained to believe that we're supposed to know what day it is right because I mean days aren't even a real thing it's totally made up just saying I'm not trying to get all philosophical here but time is just our imagination or you know something we keep track of so that we can stress out um, so yeah so there's there's the shirt let me see if this works now should and yeah I don't know why I felt that blue like that it should be just a solid blue back there deal I just sample that make the brush real large oh can't do it like that goodness I was on the wrong layer yeah I don't think it even matters at this point but we'll say it does okay so now let's go back to the clipping mask on top of this gray layer I'll lock the transparent pixels to the uh, gray shirt layer again uh, just because I use I generally like to conserve the layers a little bit by dropping at least the the larger shadow we sh uh, shadow uh, shade from the bottom up not always I mean it depends on where the light source is but in this case the light is above so I'm shading from the bottom up and so I can put that on the um, the base layer or no I actually put that on the clipping mask let me just merge that down I usually put that add a clipping mask and then now I can add another series of shadows again I don't have to stay confined to the edges of the um, color in this case the gray because I've got that clipping mask making sure I don't go outside of those edges all right that's a little better well oh, man I just have a hard time keeping all that behind the lines so we'll fix that okay another selection over here like that I bring out the little wrinkles here a little bit and where else probably right here with the chest and I think even like the separation you usually can get away with like uh, doing this part real light just to kind of you know show the uh, the dimension there and again it's on a floating layer so if, it, if I put the effects into place and as I'm working through it I look at it it's not looking good I can just go back and soften it up with a soft erase it's it's a non-destructive approach so that's always nice and you're probably like Rob I like to be destructive okay I like to break things fun without chaos how could we ever create things you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs all right so what else the, the stomach muscle here did kind of this weird shadow under the uh, rib cage there. I don't. Yeah, let's go back and edit that out. That's just kind of kind of weird. Um, so I'll go back and grab an ink brush, set to the eraser, and I can just get in here and chisel this back. 
really I should break that off into some rendering. Typically what I'll do is I'll render that and like, you know, fade that into the, uh, you know, the oblique more or something. But I think I'm going to go back and just shadow that a little more. I think it'll be fine. So let me try to select like this area. All right, let me read through the comments real quick. I want to make sure you guys aren't asking anything. Uh, do you still use multiply for the blend mode for the airbrush? Oh yeah, all the time. In fact, uh, a lot of times the blending mode is just set right inside here under rendering and multiply. So I'll leave it on there. I actually created a brush that is just my shadow brush, just my highlight brush. That way I didn't have to jump in there and keep changing the settings. I'm real lazy, so whenever I can save myself a few little clicks of you know the buttons, I'm all for that. Uh, but yeah, so I just keep doing this and then I'll get it to about here. Actually, I feel like I should add this little shadow right here for a little bit of that separation and just so you know I'm, I'm undoing and redoing my I can't see the subtle color differences as well so I'll quickly undo the selection look at it do a two finger tap for an undo and basically go back to adding my selection so just in case you're not picking up on that that's what I'm doing kind of undoing and redoing the selection so I can see it a bit better and really these shadows like all right with the chest here I could really keep building these shapes. I really recommend playing around with that um, because it just looks, it almost looks better and better each time you do this. Not always, you can definitely overdo it, but it's better than a lot of times than just adding one kind of cell shading. So see how you get that nice little transition effect? So really play around with that because you can, you can definitely create some really nice, interesting effects to your, your art style by doing this. would build up on the you know the forms essentially um, and then I'll add another one and let's put it at clipping mask again remember it's always going to go downward and, and kind of daisy chain down to the main solid layer Just reading through these again, no questions, right? Just wanna make sure I'm being a good host here. Is everybody good? Plenty of snacks, we all good here? All right, so so this one, I'm gonna set this to a, a screen mode or it could be add. Uh, let's do screen mode at first. Let's pick a lighter value, color, lack of color white. And then same thing, just select some of these areas grab a couple at the same time if you're confident what you're looking for and when in doubt just test it out just try something see if it works it's the beauty of layers folks there's no mistakes in this world yeah see and I like just that subtle effect it doesn't need to be real harsh now Another thing you can do, obviously, you can keep building up on that, like I said before, so you could do a smaller shape, you know, kind of play around with some different shapes in there, and, you know, just keep working out like that. But then also, you can do some rim lighting, some edge lighting. Maybe keep that on the top of the shirt here, top of the rib cage. And that's probably about it because I, I think the um, stomach muscles would be. Know, kind of on the it's a plane change there so I don't know that we'd want to add that same light source there but see I can do that and you could bring out other little details you know you got to remember that your lighting is a great way to control uh, focal points so you can you know bring out little details if you feel like they're not pronounced enough or something like that okay um, and back to his, his skin I had this yellow going here Let's see if that's in my Oh man, it's not in my history. That's a bummer. Why wouldn't that be in the history? I think it'd be something like this though. Not a big deal, but let's test it out. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty close. I feel like it needs to be brighter. But that's fine. Um 
you know what, I'm still on the shadow brush. Let's go on like the highlight brush. Which I don't think it matters. I think once you set the blending mode on the layer, I think it bypasses the brush mode. Don't quote me on that, but you know, kind of test both. <laughs> he didn't skip chest day, that's for sure. No, he definitely didn't skip chest day. Um, are you gonna smudge that? What do you what do you mean, icon? The those uh shapes I added on the highlights, I probably should, right? Is that what you're talking about? And somebody says, who are you drawing? Uh, San and Studios. This is uh, uh, Savage Dragon. And Luke Lenjic, uh, thank you for responding back to that. It's always nice when you guys do that. Help me out because I can't multitask. I'm trying. I'm trying. So I'll select some of these areas that I want to put a little bit more of a highlight on. Kind of like so. Make the brush a little bigger. Just glance some of that in there. Bring out the muscles. And I think for this part, it's good to start with a bigger shape for the highlight. So that if you want to work down into, you know, your smaller highlights, you can. And then what I tend to do is just kind of move these over towards the light source. So, you know, if you see, I'm going to, as I work this up, I'm going to come over a little bit. So I'm kind of trying to think about the highest point of the anatomy, you know, because that's usually where you're going to get your specular highlight, right? If there is a specular highlight, I feel like those are too much anyways. But yeah, so I'm thinking about the forms as I color. I'm not just throwing in some random uh, highlights. You know, it's not rocket science, but basically, you know, if I was to look at this bicep, I would think the highest point would probably be about right here. So to work up to that, I'm going to use a bigger shape, like through here. I'm also going to use a larger brush and just kind of softly glance through there. I usually try to avoid it being a recognizable solid shape like that. So if I use a bigger brush and I just kind of hit one side and kind of control that, again, it is a layer, so I can easily get in here with this uh, smaller brush, not this one. And I can erase back, you know, soften the edges a little bit. Something like that. Uh, yeah, Samuel Jones has a question. What is it? You just wrote, I have a question. <laughs> I see you with your hand up in the back of the class. What what can I answer for you? Actually, I should finish this face here. I think this is where we stopped in the live stream yesterday. I don't like that part. All right, I'm just seeing I have a question. Do you, do you get that question or? Did your internet go out? That would be bad. I know we had some real problems with that yesterday. It's like the internet uh, connection was a little shaky. Let me see. I want to see what the stream health is here real quick. Now it says excellent. They said that yesterday and then people were like, we're getting lag. It's lagging. It's always a bummer. And you think for all our modern advances in technology, we wouldn't have lag. Like we would all have just amazing internet speeds all over the globe. One day. One day. Okay, some highlights on the forehead wrinkles. Let's 
Streams fine for now. Pictures looking great. Ah, oh, thank you, James Largus. Large, larges. Thank you. We draw a plaque doctor. You know, I um, I don't know who that is. I'm probably I probably should know. Right? Is that a is that a villain for this character? So I'm gonna look silly because I'm drawing a character and I don't know his arch nemesis, nemesis, nemesi, nemes nemesis. What's nemesis plural? Nemesis? Anyways. Anywho. All right. And I know I shouldn't add a highlight over here, but I'm going to because I think it looks it's going to look cool. So sometimes there's that. There's when you know you shouldn't do something, but you do it anyways because you think it might look cool. And ultimately, that's all you ever want in life is to look cool. Right? You feel me? We're all there, right? That's all we want. It's gonna look cool. No matter the cost. Alright. I don't know if that looks cool, but we'll say it does. And then I'd probably do a little bit of that edge lighting. Um, you can always have a tough time with, with skin because skin's actually pretty reflective. Uh, you learn that like when you start doing some 3D work, like you gotta put like certain specularity and a little bit of glossiness. I don't know about glossiness. I know specularity. On the skin, it's actually very reflective. And that's why when you go to colorize skin, you got to add all these different colors. Like, I haven't added nearly as much color. I mean, it's really basic. I think I could probably get away with that with Savage Dragon. But, but realistically, if I want him to look more realistic, sounded weird. Um, then I would add more colors, like blue in the shadows uh, for green, I believe. Yellow for the highlights. Uh, probably even little bits of red. Um, I don't know. But I, I know that, like for the Hulk, like when they do the Hulk, uh, you know, the movie version of the Hulk, they, they have to do a lot to the skin to make them look that, that cool, that realistic. So, yeah, it's a lot to think about. But maybe not as much for comics, but it's still good to kind of you know, be aware of that. They do put so much work into just the skin. And then like the little details, I could get in here and add a bunch of little uh, stippling kind of effects, noise patterns basically, in the um, in the texture of the skin. That would make it look kind of cool. I'm not going to get that far into this one, but yeah, it's definitely techniques that you can use to punch up the effect of your characters. A little, little highlight on the nose. Alright, so I feel like the ear, even though I got it on shadow, I'm going to try just a little bit of a, a difference of, it's, you know, it's not like the light is really reaching around and hitting the ear, but still, regardless, I think that I don't want it all to be the same light source, so I'll just blend this one in, this part. Oops. And then I'll add some more shadows. So now just smudging that around, just again, just trying to soften up all that uh, consistency. I'm breaking up some of that consistency. And then some more shadows. Uh, let's add another clipping mask. Clipping mask in between a clipping mask, it automatically turns it into a clipping mask. Isn't that amazing? All right, and I, I thought there were some questions, but now I'm not seeing them. Um, can you do some shading with the nose? We'll do. I'll add some more shadows right now. And then, uh, will you try to use a light pen from Luminance to make a good light source? Uh, yeah, I could probably do that for something behind them or off to the side, really. That's where the light source would be more off the top uh, right of the character. And then Luke Lengic writes, who do you think is today's equivalent to 90s Jim Lee, someone who defines the art style for upcoming artists? Hmm. Yeah, I think we, we all should take a stab at that one. Um, You know, it's hard for me to say it's not still Jim Lee because he's still pumping out books, right? I mean, every time I turn around, he's got more stuff out there. Um, I think he's still pretty dominant as a force as far as that because he's still doing work but yeah who would be on the forefront i'll tell you what no you know what who it is in my opinion 
Ryan uh, Otley. I think that's how you say it. Uh, I would say it's Ryan Otley because basically there's been so many people that have now emulated his style and he's been so dominant uh, as a young artist or younger artist that, uh, yeah, I would, I would have to give credit to him on that one. Um, that he does so many things so well. And, and, and what's really neat is he does it so well for a relatively simplistic animated uh, style, which I think says a lot for how talented he is. How great it's lagging. That's just fantastic. Sorry about that. Hopefully that's not for everybody. Let me check stream health. It says excellent, which is probably lying to me. Um, yeah, so anyways, that's who I would say. I would really say Ryan Otley. Uh, I've seen a lot of great artists that whose, whose style uh, isn't even, um, you know, along those lines. And they're like, they're huge fans of his work. So I, I think it's his storytelling. I think he's just such an amazing uh, storyteller with his, his his work that it's uh, yeah it shows uh, that he affects a lot of other styles and and really does what's uh, what I think is kind of taken over for comics. I think it's a lot more of a simplistic style. His stuff's amazing and dynamic. I'm not saying it's simplistic, but I mean there's a lot more simplistic styles these days um yeah i think he is currently doing spider-man which i mean that says it all right generally if you're like one of the really top tier artists uh you're going to be working on what spider-man and uh spider-man batman x-men i mean what are the top selling books these days all right some more shadows in here just kind of break this up a bit more Back to the shadow brush. Yeah, not to mention, uh, I don't know if you guys have mentioned in the stream, they got an Invincible animation coming out next month, right? I'm pretty stoked for that. It looks fantastic. And I mean, it looks really identical to what he did in the books. Um, which, you know, that's kind of another neat thing about animated style comics. I, I think that when they do tend to have less uh, of that, you know, we know and love is like 90s rendering and all that, you know, fancy crosshatch work and, you know, stuff like, you know, Jim Lee's known for, David Finch is known for, um, you know, Silvestri, you know, real heavy, um, you know, rich detail, which is great, uh, but it has to be harder on, on guys like that, you know, so I would imagine that when you have, and, and plus the part I was getting at is like when you have an animated style, man, it's kind of neat that it ties right in really well to the animation to the book, you know, it's like you don't see a big difference, you know, like I was trying to watch some animated stuff by Marvel the other night, and a lot of them are just too far off from the really cool styles that I like to see from Marvel. Um, so I, I don't tend to watch them. I really like the the DC animations better uh, because they're more, uh, what's the word, graphic? I don't know, but it's they're, they're cooler um, and a little bit closer to an art style that I would admire for comics, I guess. I don't know. Um, so I, th I, think th I think that's kind of weird because Marvel seems to do so well with the movies but then, yeah, I was flipping through their animated stuff, and it's to me that's kind of lacking. It seems strange that one would do so, and then maybe not as well on the animation end of it. I don't know. I maybe. Uh, let's see. How many years does it take to learn this? Uh, I don't know. I've been drawn pretty heavily since I was 15, uh, and I've took a break a few times throughout my, you know, livelihood as an artist, but. I don't think it takes long to learn it. It's just a matter of, you know, what are you trying to get better at? How good do you want to get at certain things? Um, I would say just go for it and get as good as you, you know, look at it daily. Not like some, you know, something that you attribute some stress or to. Like, you know, I got to get this good to do the images that I want. I think that's a, a hindrance like, that's why I try not to compare myself to all these amazing artists that are out there. I learn from them, 
but man, it can be a real negative if I start comparing what they can do and how well they can do it and how quick they can do it. You know, it's, it's a weird slippery slope. Like you want to get better. So you do compare yourself, but then you have to stop that and go, all right, you know, I'm just going to be good for today. I'm going to, whatever I can do today, I'm going to knock that out because if not, then I'm going to constantly worry and produce less work and, uh, I won't, I won't get things done. And that's not, that's not a good way to be. So how long does it take to learn? Totally subjective. Uh, but, it, but the main thing is just do what you can do now and have fun with it. That's all it should be. It should be about creativity and having fun and, you know, don't, don't attach any limits to yourself. I feel like there needs to be more shadowing right here on the side of his face. I just can't picture where. I'm just going to throw in a random shape. That doesn't work. You know, maybe it just needs to be a bigger fade. So, let me take... Uh, I feel like I need to chisel out his cheekbone a little more. I really want too boring of a, of a look on this character, honestly. But... Just got to make do. Yeah, so Anthony Gee talking about the newer American anime style and that uh, anime style animation DC has been doing. Doesn't really do it for me. I prefer the older Blue, Bruce Timmish stuff from the 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, same here. I, you know, I like anime when it's when it's just anime, but when, yeah, when they mix it in with American comics, it's got to be lighter. I, I don't I don't like it either. Like I also don't like, and maybe you're kind of touching on this as well, the overly caricature look. So there was aspects of it in one of the Superman ones where I really like the look that they were using for the female characters. It reminded me of a, a Michael Turner kind of style. But then they took Superman too far with this almost like American dad chin on him. And uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't watch it for very long. I mean, it's just, so things like that, it's different strokes for different folks. Certain things are going to bug you. Other things you're just going to say, oh, that's cool. That's different, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I like the, you know, the grittier um, old school style, I guess. I don't know how else to put it. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it's just, it does just boil down to good animation and bad animation ultimately I think because there are uh, there are big differences you know like you can really see when when they're just great at the I think you really see it in the fight scenes and I love watching those for reference for um, drawing more dynamic poses and things like that but you definitely see it there like you can spot the cheesiness of the animation based upon the fight fight scenes I think It does make me realize how good we had it, though, back in the day um, with some of these animations. I mean, like, even, like, He-Man, you know, was really well drawn for the time. Um, Transformers, a lot of good animations uh, as kids. And I think they really put a lot of effort into it because they didn't have as much uh, of the uh, technology, maybe, or something. So it really shows, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard looking back sometimes because you... You know, you're so judgmental on, on, you know, what we have today, but um, by comparison, but there, there's a lot of strengths to the old school animation that I still see. And that's pretty cool considering it's so, so old at this point. It's like, I want to say in He-Man, they used, uh, they draw over, they didn't have motion capture, obviously, but they would draw over live action people I want to say maybe maybe not seems like I read that somewhere seems like I, I could see it in the animation but yeah so is it possible gamer says I've practiced for a few years but could never really get as good as other artists and I'm kind of jealous and mad <laughs> well sorry to hear that um yeah no you shouldn't you shouldn't allow that to bother you like you know when you say as good as you know, again, that's a slip. 
There's so many different styles out there and it's not a race against everybody else. I don't even know if you want to call it a race against yourself, but that's the way I use against you to get better and to develop, you know, try to be a better version of you uh, tomorrow, not a be better version of anybody else and not, not to be anybody else. Pursue, right? You can't be anybody else. You can only be you. So you don't want to attach that kind of negativity and anxiety to it. There's plenty of that are flipping amazing and see their work, okay? Maybe they have some fear of sharing it. Um, maybe they work with things. Maybe they deviated and they went into something else. All because they just, you know, maybe thought they couldn't make it or just didn't care to make a living out of it. Want to keep it as a hobby and a passion. So, all right, think about that. And then also think about the objective that somebody might walk up where maybe a few people don't. I mean, would you rather deny the person that would love your work because of fear of rejection of the others? That's not, that's not good. That's not good. You got to not listen to the haters because they're going to come out. I don't care how good you are. I've seen people hate on Jim Lee's work. Like, really? Like, what are you hating on? It's just, it's going to happen, you know? But the main thing is that you're, you're doing it for the right reason if you truly want to do it. You know, because if you don't want to do it, you're going to make every excuse under the sun. And then you're just going to say, oh, yeah, of course. Of course they don't like my work. You know, it's going to kind of reconfirm what you've been already telling yourself. So you got to be, you got to be careful of that. Um, but if you really want to do it, then who cares what other people say? I'm sure people are going to look at this and go, oh, that is a horrible savage dragon. He does not look savage at all. It doesn't matter. I'm not doing that for them. I'm doing it for you guys that want to see it. And as far as not getting good as at everybody else, that's you're comparing yourself too much. Uh, comparing yourself to maybe the you of six months ago or a year ago. Look at your old art. Are you getting better? Then you're on the right track. Are you not getting better? Then, um, you know, always always remember Einstein, right? If you're if you, uh, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results is, is like was his definition to insanity. Something to, something to that effect. I'm probably slaughtering it. But, you know, that's what you get over and over again and, and getting mad because I'm not, I'm not getting better. Maybe you're just repeating the same steps that aren't working. Um, so sometimes you just got to be more aware of, of things like that. Why does that not look? It looks like green. Um, oh, it's a clipping mask. That's why. Let's get that out of there. That explains that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a big fan of like switching up the game and trying new things. Uh, but also, you got to you gotta uh, take note of what is working. Because you don't want to just keep switching to switch. You know, like if it's something that's just not working, try to draw it in a different way. You know, start at a different part of the face. You know, do you start at the eye every single time? Is that boring you for some reason? You know, it happens. Like sometimes you just got to like be like, I'm going to start from a mouth and draw up. Or... Um, or it's working for me, then I'm going to leave it alone. But if I try to draw, you know, leg anatomy, and every time I get frustrated when I try to connect the leg to the hip, then just, you know, draw something else or draw it a different way from a different angle, uh, different technique, you know, study a different artist. There's so many things you can do to kind of change the way that you're doing things. And a lot of times that will really help you out like i find that to be uh very just you know i get bored easy so i gotta change things up and try new things a big one is go to a new place i know it's hard with everything going on you know everybody telling people to flip and stay home and all that but you know it doesn't mean you can't go somewhere you know you go sit in your car in, in, in a nice scenic spot and chill in your car if you have to, but if it's cold. That's why I'm thinking that because I live in Michigan. It's freezing. But um, but if it's nice out, you know, you get a new scenery, be around people. You know, you don't got to be right around them if that is a fear of yours or something you need to take into consideration. But you can still be like, you know, in a stone stone throw away or something. It's kind of a bummer to sit in your basement too much, or studio, whatever. I'm in a basement studio, so that's why I say basement. But it can be a 
I gotta get back into the coffee shops. Like that's that was my favorite little break or one of them, anyways. You know, kind of go chill in a coffee shop and sit here and doodle, have a nice supply of coffee. It's funny too, because every time I'd be sitting here doing something like that, there, like they just couldn't help themselves. So funny. And I'm not even a very approachable looking guy. I mean, I'm six foot, 220 pounds of rock solid muscle. All right, no, I'm not. I am six foot and 220 by any stretch of the imagination. All right, uh, what else do we got here? Drink a beer on top of a roof. Nice, Sabrina. Hakeem, drinking beer on the roof is like, like do. Uh, what do you think of Frank Cho, Luis Miguel? Oh, I absolutely love their work. Dale Kean. Uh, Dale Kean is like, he's like in the top five. Um, yeah, I, you know, I've never got to, definitely copied his art quite to anyways. Like that dude's art is just on a whole nother level. Um, you know, it's what I like most about studying his work is the way he draws um, anatomy is so clean and precise. It's just, it's, I think it's better than, a, you know, an anatomy, an anatomy book because anatomy books, tip, you know, but his style is so, it's easy to draw because it's not, uh, but it's, it's pretty spot on. This is anatomy. There's no doubt. Uh, where some people, you know, Frank Cho, he's great. Follows work a lot. I think he draws Excellent, and I love uh, paying attention to that uh, as much because I, you know, it's kind of silly. I don't be really big and stuff like that. It's not that it's not one. In a lot of ways, the way he does it very, you know, has some very accurate things. But I look at other artists that I like for drawing women. So, for instance, even though it's ultra stylized, whatever, it's J. Scott Campbell's work for women. Pretty fun way, caricature. So, I, I really like the way he draws women. Uh, who else? Um... Obviously, Jim Lee. I think Jim Lee does uh, uh, portrayals of the female superheroes. David Finch does. Um, oh, Mark Silvestri. Yeah, his, his stuff's awesome. So, yeah, it's like I look at different artists for different things. It's really, really kind of strange. Like, like, for instance, Joe uh, Benitez. I don't see his work out anymore. I don't even know if he's working on it. I love the way he drew. Okay. So, like, if ever I was sitting there trying to, you know, bang my head against the wall and figure out how to draw a cool sci-fi gun, it was like Joe Benitez came to mind because of, uh, what, wait, what was that book? Space uh, characters that were all, like, uh, it was, that was back in the 90s, I think. But anyway, so I think of it comes to mind, it's usually... I think they draw really well and that's you know it almost like they become my my resource for that uh tornika you gotta go all right thanks for showing up i appreciate that getting more lag huh <sighs> i don't get and everybody's getting that what's it saying it says yeah, I'm gonna check things out. I'll have to see if it's something in my settings in OBS. That's unfortunate. All right, well, I'll just try to wrap this up anyways. I'm just gonna, oh, I was supposed to put a light source behind him, wasn't I? I don't know, these random little, uh, blobs of ink yeah I really got to get I'm, I'm wearing a brush trying my best to get it like the uh, the patterns we'll be adding that to my free procreate set uh, because facial hair takes way too long or all this hair takes way too long every time you draw on or Wolverine yeah all I can think about is man I just got to get a brush that doesn't share it like you have to use brushes if you like sitting here and doing this and this is peaceful to you then by all means but for me I think I would rather just use a brush and move on to the next or
or other aspects of the drawing. All right, well, after I was just trying to finish this up for you guys, uh, I guess what I should be doing is spending more time trying to figure out why we're getting lag. Because that's uh, very disappointing. It's going to be hard to lag, right? Yeah, I appreciate the uh, tip there, Luke. Get a, get a hard line going. Yeah, I do work on Wi-Fi. The, you know, the weird thing is, is I've never had get it. It's a less consistent connection. Um, but man, I paid that, but apparently that doesn't matter. I probably just said that to get, get me money. To get me pot of gold. High speed, blah, blah, blah. When you get it. I don't think that's how his facial hair looks, but... hair really hard to draw is that am I the only person yeah thanks I'm, I really do want to get back into doing these like I would love to do one once a week because I, I feel like I'm one of those people like I have to have a schedule and I got to commit and be consistent or I will just not do it and I think once a week would be good at least a couple times a month See how I did that? I immediately backed out of the once a week. Minute. Like a reflex. Okay, so there's there's the hair. Let me see if I drop in you know, behind him or off to the side. I'll shadow this from the bottom up first. Like that. And somebody mentioned they wanted to see like an effect with the luminance brush. I think that I actually have to put that on the actual layer. Let me try that. Or maybe not. You know what? It shouldn't matter. Let's go back to an undo. And let's add one more layer. Let's pick one of those cool luminance brushes. Or maybe some spatter. These are always fun too, these kind of spatter brushes. Gotta get it just the right size. Yeah, I don't know. But luminance, where are they? Right here. Yeah, these brushes are awesome. I like this nebula one. Let's sample this color. Let's go something a little bit lighter. It's so messed up. You know what this, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm basically just drawing him taking a school picture, right? That's what this looks like, especially with this, <laughs> this cloud effect back here. It totally looks like the old school or maybe, I don't know, maybe they're probably still doing this, the school pictures though. I don't know. I noticed with my son, they sent him home like, you know, with a, sp a space scene and it was still kind of cheesy, but at least they were trying, trying to make something cooler. Yeah, that's pretty generic. Hold on. Yeah, maybe it does have to be merged that layer. Let's try it like that. Because these luminance brushes have the um, the uh, blending mode right into them. So I think it has to be on the layer. Yeah, see how it's more pronounced? That really doesn't look cool. That's a bit better. But I don't know why there would be like a nebula effect behind them, so let's not go with that. Lens flare? No. Give him a gold stick with a fork? Nice. Uh, the app is called Procreate. Lewis says, why are you not working for Marvel or DC? I don't know. I wish. Thank you for that vote of confidence. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm not good enough. <laughs> Why? Why? No, I don't know. One day. I'm not giving up yet, folks. I don't, I don't see any 
thing I want to do with the luminance brush. You know what? Let's try the light pen. Ooh, that's cool. But, you know, he's not, he doesn't have electric powers, but look how cool that brush is. Isn't that neat? I mean, immediate power effect. Uh, and we'll have it radiating off his... He's now the electric savage dragon. Reminds me of Godzilla. Hey, who's excited for Godzilla vs. Kong, huh? Show of hands? It's gonna be so cool. I'd be so ticked if King Kong wins, though. That's just not even cool. Alright, I've done this cheesy effect a bunch of times, but it works. So I'm gonna go with the cheesy effect. It takes me a couple times to get like the pattern right, but I'm just drawing the selection back and forth. Take the airbrush, highlight mode. Dang it. Hold on. Struggling, folks. Oh, well, I guess it's good when you guys see me struggle, right? So you realize it's not as easy as I pretend it is. Come on. This is horrible. Okay, let me try one last time. Let's see how I'm just trying different things, different patterns. To see if I can get something that looks cool. Okay. Please work. Please. Oh, you know I think it is. I'm, I shouldn't be having the, um, the center offset. Or you know what? Let's try something else. Let's try shading it from the outside in. Mm, almost. Let me see if I change the blending mode. It's gonna go with something simple, I guess. It looks like a Punisher Hulk sea creature. Nice. I 
There's that other brush that's got some stippling to it. Yeah, right here, flicks, I like this one. Set this to multiply. I think what I'll do here is I'll brush it in here like this, so kind of overdo it, and then take the eraser, big soft eraser, and then soft erase it back a little bit, so I can, you know, push that subtle effect here and there. Yeah, I'm not digging it. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> go see creature Hulk. Nice. Let me see what time we're at. All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to bring it to a close here shortly again anyways. But at least now the character is pretty much all colored. I'm still going to end up messing around with this because it's just not... That background's not cool. I'm wondering if if I maybe just uh, somebody had mentioned earlier in yesterday's stream that the complementary color was more of a purple. So let's try that. And I feel like I just need to add more of an effect to the light source. So I might mess around and do like um, kind of the same thing I was doing somewhat. Like rays of light, that might be kind of silly, but at this point, try whatever. And I also have a, um, a supply of things that I've done in the past. Like one of the great things about digital is you just save stuff that does work you know so when you do hit these problem areas you can just grab a layer or something like that I got plenty of backgrounds that I can pull from I, I do feel like it's cheating you know I don't want to do that a whole lot that looks probably looks a little silly but um, but yeah so sometimes I'll just grab an old background and throw it in there change it a bit you know you got to recycle your work so yeah that's really that's really it let's see Try one more blending mode. No, it's not really doing a whole lot, is it? Yeah, that's a good one, Luke. Try rain in the front and lightning in the background. Yeah, if I had more time, I would do that. Um, but hey, let's do this. Um, I'm going to bring it to a close now uh, for the next one. And hopefully I can get the stream uh, health figured out, you know, get better stream quality going for you guys. Uh, but for the next one, what would you guys like to see? Would you like this? Would you like to keep focusing on drawing characters, uh, different characters? Or would you like to do some how to draw stuff? What, what's what do you think's best a best uh, approach for our next live stream? Amika rocks. Okay, I said it. There you go. Amika rocks. Um. Yeah. So I got. All right. Got a couple suggestions there. We got Howard the Duck versus Donald Duck. And I was like, no, no, Howard the Duck. Um. Or Ninja Turtles. 
Uh, Thanos mixed with the Venom character. That'd be kind of wild. Action scenes. Mortal Kombat. Yeah, you know, I maybe Ninja Turtles. I, I hate to pick something that's, that would be easier, but with these live streams, I really... It, for me, it would probably have to be out of Ninja Turtles and Thanos. I find both those characters easier to draw. Um, I would draw Howard the Duck, but I'll be honest, I don't draw a good duck. I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, I really struggle with certain animals. Um, but Ninja Turtles are pretty pretty easy. I've drawn them a bunch of times, so we could do that. Or Thanos, uh, Venom, I draw him all the time. That's another easy one easier you know because of the amount of times I've drawn the character yeah so we'll figure it out I, I appreciate the ideas and the suggestions we got some stuff to move forward on uh, so and again I want to thank everybody for coming in and watching uh, sorry the stream was choppy again I will do my best to get that figured out uh, run a, a solid cable connection hopefully that'll that'll take care of it and uh, yeah, more content on the way very soon. So thanks very much and uh, good luck with your art. Bye for now.